Here's another What's on Jake's Plate today. So today, we're going to be talking about the difference between the Civil War and the Revolutionary War. The war that, came, the war that was first was the Revolutionary War. There's a big, powerful country up in the continent of Europe named Great Britain. Its ruler was King George III. Now, I'm not sure when he came into power, but I think it was in the early 1700s. Or it could have been the late 1600s. I'm not exactly sure. So, it was a very powerful country, and there is France right underneath it. And they could have possibly gone to war with them because of Napoleon. He was like a rebel. He didn't really like Great Britain, and he wanted to go to war with them. And a lot of people were scared, and they were afraid. So, they sent over explorers to America. But they didn't know it was called America. They called it the New Land. So, they set up, so Great Britain sent over settlers to the new land named America. So in America, there were the people that were born there. They're called the Native Americans. The English settlers weren't really happy. They felt threatened by the Native Americans. So they didn't treat them very well. It was very sad. So eventually, in, um, Amer the new land, America, wanted to become their own place. Great Britain doesn't want to rule them. That's what they wanted. But Great Britain wanted to rule them. They wanted them so they could tax them. But there's this thing called the House of Burgesses. Now, the House of Burgesses was like Congress. And Congress is the group in the government that makes the laws, the taxes, all the decisions for the people. But they didn't have any congressmen up in Great Britain. So they were just making decisions to tax them without anybody representing them. And they weren't very happy with that. It's called taxation without representation. And the last straw for Great Britain until they started a war was the new land, the English settlers, dressed up as Native Americans, went onto British ships and threw away the tea that their tax that Great Britain was taxing them on. They threw away all the tea. Great Britain had it. They were so mad, they started a war. King George III brought over all the officers and even some German mercenaries. Mercenaries are people that um, fight for the government and they are like officers and different kind of soldiers. So they brought over German mer mer mercenaries and a lot of soldiers. And America, the new land, thought they were going to lose because they didn't have any real military. They just formed little groups and would fight with a couple guns. And remember, the French hated Great Britain. So the French actually ended up helping America. So that's where America got all of their weapons and supplies from France. So as they were fighting the war, it was a really bloody battle. Now, the general on the American side was George Washington. We all know him. He was the first president of the United States of America. And the general on the Great Britain side was, his name was George, um, General Cornwallis. He was a very good general, but he liked to attack head-on. And America, the new land, George Washington, he wasn't in going head-on because he didn't have the supplies. Great Britain ruled the sea. They had the biggest navy of the time. They had the biggest army, the best army. But then eventually, what America did was there's a city named Yorktown, named after the governor of a place in America, or in Britain, I'm not sure, called York, or Mr. York. And so King George III named this town after Sir York. So it's called Yorktown. That's where America got all their goods. It was a very important place for them. And Britain sealed it off from anybody. And they brought in these battleships, these huge, big ships, to cannon them and do a bunch of horrible things to the city. But what George Washington did is he took a lot of ships and he nailed them in. For three days straight, he was blasting them, the whole fleet, with all these cannons. And eventually, General Cornwallis surrendered. And that's where America became a free country, and that was called the Revolutionary War. Now to move on to the Civil War. The Civil War came quite after that, about 100 years. It started in 1863. Now, after America became one nice country named the United States of America, it didn't stay united for very long. Eventually, the South of America, who loved to have slaves, the North of America, who weren't very happy with slaves, were disagreeing. Because, see, back in the Revolutionary War, which was the English settler days, they went over to Africa. Remember, Great Britain had a lot of explorers, so they went down to Africa and they explored it, and they had the map pretty much figured out by then in their area. So they saw these people, 
the African Americans, they were saying, hmm, maybe we can use them for slave work. Because back then in Africa, there were a lot of tribes. And one tribe wanted to be the most powerful, but they had to take out these other smaller tribes to, de to beat them. And they didn't want to use sticks and stones. They wanted to use guns. So they would trade food or guns for people, and they would have slaves. At the time, everybody liked slavery. Even the North had some slaves. But then eventually, they started to have a lot of disputes. North realized this is wrong. The South said, we like slaves. We don't want to do the work ourselves. So what happened was the South eventually broke off. Now it's a new country. The North, who was the good side, named the Union, and the South, who was the bad side, named the United Confederacy. So the Confederacy had to have their own president, so they elected a man named Jefferson Davis. Up in the Union, they needed to have a president also, so they elected Abraham Lincoln. We all know who he is. So eventually, what really started the war was that there is a shoemaker shop up in the, it was on the border of the Union and the Confederacy. The Confederacy, the South, bad people, wanted to buy some shoes. The North, the good people, the Union, went in and bought some shoes. They got in a fight, and so the Union and the Confederacy both thought this would be a great time to start a battle. And they did. It was a bloody battle, the Battle of Gettysburg. The battle of Gettysburg lasted for a while, but eventually the Union won. Because what happened was the Confederacy, the bad guys, tried to send in another um, group of people to attack the side, the strongest part of the Union soldier formation. And they lost because they didn't have the manpower. The general on the Confederacy side was, his name was Robert E. Lee. Now on the North side, it was George G. Meade and Ulysses S. Grant. And on the South side, at the very beginning of the war, there general who didn't last very long was Stonewall Jackson and he got the name for the very first battle of the Revol of the Civil War. It was up in Bull Run. It's an area in Virginia and the Confederacy won because he set up a wall against the Union. They were firing at them and the Union had to back off and the South won that battle. And the capital of the Confederacy, if you remember this, is Richmond, Virginia. The South tried to keep going into Northland and start battles there, but they lost every single one. But the South was also doing pretty good with defending. But eventually, the Union came into Richmond, Virginia, the capital, and started a battle, and the Union won. So the general for that battle was Ulysses S. Grant, and George G. Mee was his second in command. So the way that the Confederacy surrendered was a pretty funny way. So. What happened was Robert E. Lee stood up on a hill and he waved a handkerchief and said, This war is over, please. He lost too many men. He was annoyed. It was the bloodiest battle, bloodiest war ever. Men beat each other with fence sticks or stones if they lost ammo to their gun or their gun broke. They would use their bayonets. It was a very bloody battle. So Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant. Eventually, it became back to the United States of America and Abraham Lincoln abolished slavery. But the only bad part was he didn't really live to see it. He lived to see it, but he died shortly after by a man named John Wilkes Booth in a theater, Ford's Theater, and currently in Washington, D.C. So thank you. I hope you learned as much of it as the kids from my school did. And thank you.